We're back, um, we're back with another 2023 junior cycle exam question. Uh, this time we're moving on to question four. So this is a fairly approachable sheet. We have a 3D question, we have a freehand sketch question, a roof geometry question, and a circles and contact question. So very first one is a sketch. It is asking you to draw a sketch looking in a direction of arrow A. So it's an elevation, it's back to our orthographic projection. We already have done one of these in the paper already, so this should be fairly um, fairly approachable for most. So all I'm going to do is just start out with a square. Again, freehand sketching. They want to see that you're not using rulers or anything like that. And um, if you remember from the last freehand sketching question I've done, you'll notice that I'm going pretty quick. So square. I'm going to draw my center line straight down the middle. I'm doing this all in a very very light pen. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and draw the base. Uh, just now. So. You'll see then afterwards, I'm gonna slow myself down once I get my black pen out. Okay, so I'm gonna slow myself down and try to be as accurate as possible with my finished uh, solution. So really kind of like lightly with my pen initially and then when I'm happy enough with it, with my line go a little bit heavier. Um, it doesn't ask you to shade anything in relation to this question, but I'm just gonna add a little bit of contrast on my drawing just because it, there is a darker roof so I'm going to add in a darker roof and a darker base now you'll see now in a second. Um, <clears throat> I was a little bit dodgy with the next couple of lines uh, particularly with my base. The sheet was off to my left or the question was off to my left you might be able to see it now my ropey head in the way there but my, the, the sheet was off to my left I'm right handed so I was kind of leaning across and obviously trying not to get my head too much into the shot and um, so the base is a little bit askew it looks like it's kind of gotten a little bumped or something um, but that's basically it just take your time doing your curve take your time doing your sketch um, and kind of like sketching in polygons like this and, and circular shapes like this will really help so the likes linking back to your CBA, your freehand sketch, and that sort of stuff. That's exactly what we're trying to assess. So that's that question basically done. Easy marks again, and we'll move on. Right, so we're moving on to question uh, part B. So question four, part B, and uh, this is a light bulb question. There's an awful lot of students that would have done kind of similar questions to this over their time in graphics. There's an awful lot of questions that are similar to this in books and whatever else. Um, sample papers etc so it's telling us that there is a little uh, light gray um, rectangle that's 15 millimeters by whatever width this bottom piece is so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to mark off that 15 millimeter measurement with a little, little mark there and I'm going to draw on a horizontal line it tells us that the radius 45 for the, the bottom curve of our light bulb the center of it is somewhere along that radius 15 millimeter line. It tells that from our, from our construction. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to set my compass to radius 45 millimeters. And I'm going to go ahead and draw in where the center points are on both sides. So one side there and one side over here. So it tells us in our question that the circles are touching one another so I'm just going to go ahead and do a little bit of maths over here on the left hand side of my sheet so I'm going to add 34 and 45 because there are two radiuses so that's going to give me a dimension of 79 millimeters so I'm going to go ahead and set a dimension of 79 millimeters on my uh, sets on my compass sorry and I'm going to swing an arc we know that the radius or the center of the the radius 34 millimeter circle is somewhere along that center line because it tells us that in our question so i just swung an arc there and i just swung an arc there on both sides just to kind of prove a point really um, but that's where the center of that radius 34 mil circle is going to go so set my compass to 34 swing in my arc and then i can start doing my construction lines for my radius 45 millimeter so back to where those center points are draw in my construction arcs like so and then I can just go about finishing off my question. So that's my question essentially. That's the construction of my question essentially done. I can just go out and finish off the three lines that I have to draw and my um, my arcs. The last thing we do need to show is it's asking us to show all our points of contact. So that's what I'm doing here. You just join two centers of, um, of touching circles. Um, 
and then where they cross essentially where the where where, the, where when you join the centers where that line crosses the arcs that's going to give you your point of contact so just marked off my points of contact there because it tells us to show all your points of contact in your questions so that means his marks going for it and then i'm just going to go around in heavy with my uh black pen now just or my heavy pencil to um to kind of highlight basically the, the entire the, to finish off my drawing essentially okay to finish off my drawing and that's what we're trying to really hammer home here i think with this with this paper is you're right yeah okay you can you can construct an awful lot of these shapes but just make sure you're finishing off your questions okay so that's basically that question finished i'm going to speed this a little bit up as i go and finish off the question but that's essentially this question done once you have the construction in like i said it's just about finishing off and heaving up your solution so just putting your little marks in there and then just indicating them with a little POC so there's no confusion to the observer that you know exactly that, that is where the point of contact is. But that's essentially us finish this question. We're going to move on to question uh, 4C and we'll start that now. Okay, 4C, this is a perspective question. So we have our two vanishing points, V1 and V, uh, sorry, VP1 and VP2. It is asking us to create a 3D drawing of the shapes that we've seen already. So all we're essentially doing for any of these vanishing point questions, once they are kind of half started like this here, is just extend your uh, points through your vanishing points. So going from VP2 here, through that point and where they cross, that will give us the front surface essentially finished. Okay, we're going back to VP1 now and we're just extending the um, or we're going from where the base touches and um, the ground or where, where, where that kind of that Z shape is there at the very front of your drawing and then we're joining the back, back of the base back to VP2 and again that back to that Z back to VP2 as well so that's eventually going to finish off the uh, base for us now just that little line there and all we have to do now is just go around it with our heavy pencil so very simple very very quick question if you know what you're doing if you don't know what you're doing it is a bit confusing so i kind of got out of that so going in and heavy now with our heavy pencil or our heavy pen make sure you're lining up your vps when you're doing this as well so make sure you're actually going back to your construction line line up to where it goes to your vanishing point and drawing in those lines because it can be very very easy to just kind of draw them askew okay so I'm, I'm basically lining up where that construction line is and then i'm making sure it's going back to my vanishing point and drawing that guy in um, and like i said once you know what you're doing this is this is a fairly fairly handy enough question um anyone who's done uh art or vanishing points in general in graphics uh you'll be well handy at it it doesn't go up as much as it used to um but definitely in these kind of shorter questions it does. So that's us basically finished off. That's our question finished. We're gonna move on to 4D now. So 4D is a little bit of a weird question. I'm just gonna hit pause there for a second um, and just go through the question. So it's asking us to, uh, I actually refer to this as roof geometry earlier on. Roof geometry is a DCG question. Uh, anyone who's doing junior cycle graphics might know that term. Um, but it, it, it is essentially a roof geometry question. It's asking you to complete the indexing of the elevation from the given plan. So that's asking you to highlight the A, B, C, D, and O in elevation, which you need to do. So we'll go ahead and roll that there and do that. And then once you finish that, again, we'll pause. It's gonna ask you to find the true length of the line OC. Okay, so we'll roll that on again. So I'm going to indicate OC in my drawing. So it's this line here. Okay, so that's OC in our plan view. So OC in our elevation view will be the right slope line, basically above it. Okay, so we need to find the true length of it. So the easiest way to do this for me uh, would be a rebattement. So all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take the length of OC on my compass, I'm gonna swing that length down to where it hits my XY line, and then I'm gonna drop it into plan. Okay, so take the length of OC, 
on your compass, swing that arc all the way around to where it hits your XY line. I have to extend my XY line along a little bit. So where that arc hits that line, the XY line, I'm gonna bring that down into my plan view. And then I'm gonna bring out O, because basically what I've done is I've rotated O down so it hits the ground. I rotated out O, so I'm gonna bring O from its point in plan out to that line that I've just brought down. And then I'm just gonna join it back to C. So that is my true length of the line OC. So it's a rebatment method. It's If anyone was doing a true shape, you might remember how to do a rebatment or if you could look along it as well. There's other ways of doing it, but that is how I would do it. Especially given the limited space you have, uh, the limited information you have, that sort of stuff. That is how I would do that question. So that's that sheet done. Um, the next question is our axonometric, isometric uh, question. So because that's a question on its own, it's a question on a sheet of its own, that'll be a video of its own. So that'll be hitting YouTube in a while. We'll chat to you then. Thanks.